It winds down the rise like a tear going down Cheekside Creek to the body of blood salty golden holding the life of our own though we do not look at the river as it winds down the rise like a tear going down Cheekside Creek to the body of blood salty golden holding the life of our own though we do not look at the river as it winds down the rise like a tear going down Cheekside Creek to the body of blood salty golden holding the life of our own though we do not look at the river as it winds down the rise like a tear Part 1. The Past The river and swamps of Robinson County have played an important role in the community's history. Recently, climate change and local development have begun to alter the movement and use of water in the county. As we listen to perceptions of environmental change, think about the community values we want to preserve moving forward. Robinson County is primarily a flood area. And... Uh, that is why the early settlers, the white settlers did not settle here at first because it was swamps. So it's really diverting back to its original state. Now people would be offended at hearing me say that, but that's the actual truth. Henry Mary Lowry was so good at getting away from the sheriff and his men because he knew his way around the swamps. He could hide out in the swamps for days and the sheriff couldn't locate him because he was actually afraid to go into the swamps. So it's a special place. It's, it's, a, it's really rich in natural beauty in many ways. You, you can go through the swamps now and you see the cypress trees out in the swamps and, and, the, and the beautiful water and you see the, uh, the, the forest here. You go on the river and it's beautiful. You feel like you're in another world. You get transported and you're right next to where people are living. I mean, it's amazing for that. I think that's true. I think the, uh, the earth, I don't know what's going on with it, but we're having more storms. And they're coming, they're coming back to back. And it's, it's really a terrible thing because uh, people, it's, it's, like, it's like the world is... Really not coming to an end, but it's like it's getting to that stage where it's coming to an end, where it's just what there is. I think climate and just the way the world's changing and the environment's changing, it is affecting, you know, weather. Plus, I mean, you have to think about, I mean, how how are how are we changing our, our infrastructure in our county? I mean, are we putting in new interstates? Are we putting in new roadways? Are we putting in bridges? Um, all those things uh, where water used to travel naturally through our county. Um, so we have to think about all of those things in our, in our county because we do have a, I mean, we're different. We have a major river that runs through our county. Eso sí fue espantoso. Espantoso, fue terrible. Um, el agua atravesaba por, por aquí por el, por el patio por la yarda y, y formaba un río toda la casa o sea todo estaba inundado alrededor de la casa toda la calle cubierta de agua este aquí enfrente de la casa tenemos una alcantarilla y esa alcantarilla no, no daba abasto a, a consumir toda el agua que, que llegaba de todos los alrededores Todo se, se concentraba aquí. Así que veía yo con terror como el agua iba subiendo y subiendo y subiendo. In 2016, Hurricane Matthew brought historic rainfall that flooded several areas along the Lumbee River, including Pembroke, Lumberton, Maxton, and Red Springs. In several instances, infrastructure failures contributed to flooding across the county. In Lumberton, for example, the levee system which was built in the 1970s to protect the city, failed because of a weak point where the CSX Railroad crosses under I-95. As I understand, they knew there was a problem uh, with the railroad and because of the disagreement between 
the two bodies, government, local government and railroad officials, they fail to correct the problem. The impact of that behavior then cause further devastation to the people once the flood came, which nobody had control of. Because people kept telling me, oh, yeah, that'll never happen again. That's a hundred year flood. It'll never happen again. And well, almost exactly two years for Lawrence is, and it happened the same thing. So fast forward two years to Florence, um, we built a sandbag, stone and earth berm at that opening. And I would argue even though it washed out, it breached after 48 hours, that it gave citizens, it gave um, city employees two days to evacuate, to better prepare, to kind of get ready for what was going to happen. We went to Lumberton. I said, I got to see it with my own eyes. I've got to see the water at Fuller's. You know, I saw it on Facebook and on people's telephones. I said, but it's just don't look real. I got to see it. And oh my God, this is what it looked like 10,000 years. That's how much water was originally in Robinson County before they started draining the swamps and ditching. The water level was much higher. Well, I think where you have so much flood water intermingling with so much sewer water and so much chemical, and you got everything all mixed together, and you don't know where it all went because who knows? <laughs> After all that water, it, it can travel a long way, and you not even know, you know, whether it's bacterial or fungal or viral or chemical or or what. It just kind of all gets mixed up and dumped here or there. But with all these trees being cut down now, it's affecting the ecosystem. The ecosystem, just the natural ecosystem is affected. And I think that's why a lot of water is sitting around. It flooded beyond what anyone had ever seen in multiple places along the river. I mean, from upstream your headwaters all the way down into South Carolina. I mean, it's just obliterate. So swamps were higher. I've noticed that uh, the water like physically, the pH was higher. Black water is a uh, low pH, but for months, the pH was around neutral seven than it was before. Um, that's different. Yeah, I would figure rivers are alive, so it's probably changed quite a bit. Part two, the present. County and city officials have begun to address local flooding issues but residents express ongoing concerns about the state of recovery and the possibility of future flooding. As you watch this segment, think about how community groups and local governments can work towards shared or complementary goals. Consider areas of opportunity for collaboration between community members and tribal and local governments. But I'm, I'm really concerned about our river, I think. Um, like I said, with Matthew, they didn't go in there and clean it out with the fallen trees in Matthew. And now with Florence, it's just, you know, double. Yeah, at least double now. And so, and, um, you know, Because it runs to the ocean. If it's flowing good, that water's not going to stand like that. So why isn't the water leaving from there like it should? So, I mean, the ditches just aren't open up like they should. Mm -hmm. so we're concerned about our river, the Lumbee. The Lumbee River, we're really concerned about it and the maintenance of it and what they're going to do now to go in there and clean that river out so that if, Lord knows we don't ever want it, but um, that it won't be as severe for us if we have another flooding. There's still drains that have, were crushed during Matthew that are still crushed. There are drains that are growing up where uh, trees and little trees and things are growing up now that shouldn't be but we just like I don't know what's going on they say the money has not been affiliated for them to move the uh, tree stumps that are still in the yards growing uh, they're being infested with mosquitoes and snakes and different things of that nature things that you don't normally see that you're seeing more of now because of these things the community overall lacks communication. 
communication from the leader leader aspect to the community citizen aspect is almost limited to none in my opinion um i cannot speak for everyone i'm clearly just speaking for myself and what i know but i feel as if if you don't know certain people or if you don't already have a slight understanding of the resources or things available to you they're not available to you and i feel like if there was a level of communication there will be more people available to these resources and there will be more resources available because i do feel like people have ideas or things that be, can be contributed into the community but because they're not being seen or heard it's kind of just being overlooked and just not played upon at all and so i feel like there has been i will not say that there hasn't been any sources or resources to come and try to rebuild the community but it's the same resources the same people and they reach out to the same people all the time you know like you stick in one side of the community and you build one side of the community which is the community that don't usually you know deal with it the hardest when things start to come and so i feel like if more of the leaders would step out of that comfort zone of I'm only gonna deal with the leaders or deal with the people I know. I do feel like there could be a, a huge impact on the community. But things are better. Mm -hmm. um, preparation, uh, we know what areas flood the worst, the fastest. Mm -hmm. um, there's currently construction and an agreement with CSX alone to where there was friction. Mm -hmm. There's a recent agreement and not only that they have Lumberton, they have CSX, they have the citizens. I do think that after Matthew and Florence and Dorian, if you've heard, there's been a lot of conversation about clearing of the rivers and canals and debris. So I think we're going to see, because it's already begun with um, the river clearing, we're going to see more of that. So I think that's that's going to be changed for a, a benefit for, for the greater good. So we're going to start seeing some of this um, cleaning, um, clearing the riverways. You'll see some of the landscape change for that, just which is a great process for me. It's, a good, it's for the good. So I think that kind of change we'll see. And then just the reorganization of some of these neighborhoods with the buyout program. When you're talking about um, flood resiliency, it, there's no magic bullet or, or a magic pill that cures all ills. Um, it's building the berms around the water plant, around RIMPAC. It's creating the floodgate at CSX. It's doing the drainage project in the Tanglewood area to take the water off of uh, the hospital. It's cleaning out all of the drainage canals. It's doing the stream restoration project. It's the acquisition of homes and um, businesses that are in the floodway. It's the elevation of homes that are in other flood prone areas. It, it's clearing and snagging the river to remove those root masses and, and treetops that are going to clog that up when it rains. And when you do all, you know, no one of those mm -hmm. is going to fix everything. But when you do them all collectively and you diversify that effort, you can make an impact. Part three, the future. Community members discuss their ideas about how to adapt and live with water, as well as their long-term visions for the future of Robson County. We ask you to consider, how can we put these ideas and others into action? ¿Qué se podría lograr? Yo, yo pienso que se podría lograr, no alguno. Limpiando, sembrando árboles y manteniendo, eso vería un... Y quizás sembrando jardines en donde, donde ha pasado, donde ha quedado como un ditch, llenarlo y, y pienso que, porque le digo, las plantas absorben el agua. Entonces, eh, si yo no tengo un recipiente y traigo un, de este vasito, traigo un galón de agua, no va a caber en ese vaso. Entonces, ¿qué necesito? Otro más grande. Entonces, debemos eh, producir algo que consume el agua. Cuando, cuando, cuando llueve, pues las plantas absorben la, el agua. Pienso que más plantas, más árboles, más, más, más flora, más, ahora sí que fauna y todo eso. I think one of the ways to solve that flooding problem which will take years, is to quit paving over everything. You, you see the malls in, in Lumberton and uh, where 
Walmart is and Lowell's. You know, it's acres and acres of pavement. And all that water's got to go somewhere. But there is, I understand there's paving material that's permeable that you can put down and the water will go through it. You see a lot of developments coming up here in Lumberton, like you see a lot of new stores, a lot of new places, and it's like, how do we find, and then how they've improved downtown? And it's almost like, I understand that, you know, of course money is allocated to certain things, but it's like, we can't, re we can't you know, redirect some of that funds. Cause I don't, I'm not excited about a, a water display or whatever downtown, a new soundstage, if my community is still like looking like trash. I would like to see um, some of the issues with flooding and the hurricanes and all that dealt with and, and continuing to be dealt with because sometimes I think we have a tendency as human beings to do something and then if it's not happening anymore to forget about it and go away. So, I mean, we have to be vigilant. I'd like to see more people on the river. I'd like to see more people knowing more about the ecosystem, the land around them, understanding it better. Um, figuring out why I-95 goes underwater and making sure that it doesn't in the future. Um, figuring out why neighborhoods flood over and over. And rather than destroying those neighborhoods, figure out how to not, how to divert that water away. Um, does that mean building less? Does that mean having a smaller footprint when we do build? Um, does that mean creating green areas throughout the community so that water can perk into the ground? But I think that when you're dealing with that infrastructure stuff, you cannot forget you're dealing with people's lives. And that you can't just say, oh, we're going to buy out this community because it's flood prone and we'll just tell all these people that they have to move somewhere else. You can't do that. You destroy history. You destroy community bonds. You, you create upheaval in people's lives that can be tra seriously traumatic. Um, it may be unavoidable in some places, but it should be the last resort. Um, we really need to put our human smarts into figuring out how do we do less damage. Look at the river as it winds down the rise like a tear going down Cheekside Creek to the body of blood salty golden holding the life of our own though we do not look at the river as it winds down the rise like a tear going down Cheekside Creek to the body of blood, salty, golden, holding the life of our own. Though we do not look at the river as it winds down the rise, like a tear going down Cheekside Creek. To the body of blood, salty, golden, holding the life of our own. Though we do not look at the river as it winds down the rise, like a tear going down Cheekside Creek. To the body of Blood salty golden, holding the life of our own, though we do not look at.